guys, welcome to RBK, week two in lockdown. Hope you're having a good time at home and not driving your parents too crazy. And if you are, I forgive you. Hey, before we get into it, I just want to give a shout out for birthdays this week. We only got one, and it really was a week and a half ago. Raphael Cook, Rafaela Cook, congratulations on reaching another milestone. You got to 12, yay. I don't have any chocolate to give you right now, but I have one to eat myself. So while I eat this, Let's get into some worship and celebrate Jesus.
It's who you are It's who you are Alright guys, mm. beg your pardon. You may kind of wonder why I'm eating cabbage. However, there's a point to this. Now, you may remember last week we learned a bit about King Nebuchadnezzar in the book of Daniel and how he was a king who'd witnessed amazing miracles like when Mishrach, Shadrach, and Abednego got thrown into the fiery furnace and God sent an angelic being to save them. Now you'd think with all that that he'd, he'd put God first in everything he did. However, King Nebuchadnezzar had a bit of a problem. He was full of pride. So things didn't quite work out the way he wanted them to. Now Nebuchadnezzar had a dream that troubled him. He called for his wise men and asked for their help. He told them what he saw in the dream, but they didn't understand what it meant. When the king realised they couldn't help him, he turned to Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar told Daniel that in his dream he saw an enormous tree that touched the sky and could be seen by everyone. It was a fruitful tree where animals and birds came for shelter and food. But then a messenger came down from heaven and cut the tree down and just left a stump. Daniel told Nebuchadnezzar that the dream was about how God was going to take Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom away and humble him for seven years by making him live with wild animals and eat grass like a cow. God was going to punish him because he was full of pride and did not thank God, the one who had given him the authority to be a ruler over the kingdom of Babylon. The tree stump that was left meant that once Nebuchadnezzar said he was sorry and acknowledged that God was the ruler over all, he would be given back his kingdom. Daniel told Nebuchadnezzar to say sorry and do what was right because that's what God wanted him to do. But Nebuchadnezzar didn't listen to Daniel's warning. A year later, Nebuchadnezzar still thought he was God's gift to creation and that he was the most awesome guy ever born. Now, it's important to remember that God always does exactly what he is, says he's going to do. And so Nebuchadnezzar was kicked out of his kingdom and lived like a cow for seven years. After the seven years of living like an animal, Nebuchadnezzar was very sorry and asked God to forgive him. And God kept his word to give the king his kingdom back. Hey guys, every gift that we have was given to us by God. In fact, every gift that anyone's ever gotten in their lives was given to them by God. And usually when we get a gift, it's quite polite to say thank you and acknowledge the gift and use it wisely. Unfortunately, when sent into the world, because of that, we don't actually say thank you to God very much. We let our pride get in the way and we like to think of ourselves as quite important and stuff. A bit like Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar learned the hard way that being proud is a bad thing. So hey, let's try and reverse that and be more thankful to what God's given us. As we close, I'm going to read part of Daniel to you. Daniel chapter 4 verse 37. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and exalt and glorify the King of Heaven, because everything he does is right and all his ways are just. And those who walk in pride he is able to humble. What Nebuchadnezzar is basically saying is that too much pride puts us before God, and we should give all glory to God. Now, I have a bit of a competition for you guys this week. You'll find on our website, Abigail, can you please hold that up? A coloring competition. This is open to everyone, not just kids, but adults as well, parents. If you want to color, print that, download this, print it out, color it in, and then scan it and email back to me, I and my wife, Rebecca, Mrs. Brophy, will judge it this week and we'll give out prizes for the best coloring in next week. 
on a video next week. So yes, please do your best efforts. Stay within the lines isn't necessary. Just get it colored in. And now we're going to close with prayer. So have you got to close your eyes, please. Dear Lord, we pray that we have a great week this week, Lord. We pray that we all treat our parents well. We all get on well, Lord. And we all just show our love and the love of Jesus to everyone we meet, Lord. Even if it's only our family. Thank you, Lord, for everything we do, everything you give to us, Lord. And be thankful, Lord. We're thankful, Lord, for the gifts that you give us. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.